The risk for developing thyroid cancer when a close family member is affected by it depends on the type of thyroid cancer that the family member has. It is useful to think of thyroid cancer as either being part of a genetic syndrome that causes thyroid cancer as well as other types of tumors or as not being associated with a genetic syndrome and instead referred to as sporadic. While medullary thyroid cancer is one of the less common types of thyroid cancer, its genetic risks are the most understood. Medullary thyroid cancer exists in a spontaneous form and inherited form. About 25% of patients with medullary thyroid cancer inherited as a part of a condition called multiple endocrine neoplasia 2 syndrome, abbreviated as MEN2. This syndrome is passed from parent to child in an autosomal dominant manner, meaning it has a very strong genetic risk. If either a mother or a father has the abnormal gene causing MEN2, then 50% of their children are likely to inherit the gene. Almost all people that inherit the gene will have medullary thyroid cancer, so it is important to identify family members at risk. Fortunately, the presence of the gene can be simply detected in a blood sample by testing for a mutation or defect in a specific gene, called the RET gene. It is important that the person that tests positive for this gene notifies all family members, including children, brothers, sisters, and parents, so they can each be evaluated by a doctor. Family members should see a genetic counselor to learn more about the risks and benefits of genetic testing. Tumors other than medullary thyroid cancer tumors associated with the MEN2 syndrome include benign parathyroid tumors, which can cause hyperparathyroidism, meaning elevated blood calcium levels, and benign adrenal gland tumors called pheochromocytomas, which can trigger severe hypertension. MEN2 can also cause osteoporosis, or low bone density, and kidney stones. Other thyroid cancers, including papillary, follicular, and hurdle cell, are called non-medullary thyroid cancer. There are several other types of genetic syndromes that can cause these types of thyroid cancer. One is called familial adenomatous polyposis, abbreviated as FAP. FAP is known for causing colon polyps and colon cancer at a young age. There is also an increased risk of papillary thyroid cancer in this condition, particularly in young women, as well as other benign and cancerous tumors such as bone, liver, and brain tumors. A second disorder called Cowden syndrome is associated with follicular thyroid cancer and may also cause other tumors, including the breast, colon, uterus, brain, and skin. Another rare condition is Carney's complex, which can cause either papillary or follicular thyroid cancer, in addition to tumors of soft tissue, adrenal or pituitary glands, and the testes. It can also cause bluish colored skin lesions. If a patient does not have any of these syndromes, it is still possible to inherit a predisposition to develop thyroid cancer. Studies from multiple medical centers have shown that about 5% of patients with a differentiated thyroid cancer, usually papillary, have one or more family members who also have thyroid cancer. When a patient has only two first-degree relatives, including parents, siblings, or children, with non-medullary thyroid cancer, two-thirds of the time this is a chance occurrence. However, when there are three or more family members affected, there's over a 95% chance that heredity is a contributing factor. Therefore, it is important that the patients share their family medical history with their physicians because it can be helpful in assessing that patient's risk of developing thyroid cancer and other medical conditions. Similarly, patients should share their information with their relatives. There is significantly less known about genetics and outcomes of patients with hereditary non-medullary thyroid cancer than is known about hereditary medullary thyroid cancer. Despite considerable research done with affected families, a gene hasn't been identified that is thought to be responsible for the familial occurrence of non-medullary thyroid cancer. Until one or more such genes are located, there is no test that can identify family members at risk for developing non-medullary thyroid cancer. There are some studies that indicate that familial or inherited non-medullary thyroid cancer behaves more aggressively than those cancers that do not appear to be inherited. 
When it is inherited, for instance, there may be more than one focus of cancer in the thyroid. This is called multicentric and is more likely to spread outside of the thyroid into nearby tissues or lymph nodes. Patients with multicentric thyroid cancer also tend to have higher recurrence rates and may have a shorter life expectancy. This data has led many doctors to recommend more aggressive treatment for patients with more than three family members with papillary or follicular thyroid cancer. Treatment might include a more extensive neck surgery that includes a full removal of the thyroid gland with the surrounding lymph nodes and potentially another treatment called radioactive iodine therapy. However, not all studies show this increased risk, so more research is necessary to clarify this important question. When a person has a family member with thyroid cancer and is considering genetic testing, there is some important information that can help determine if testing should be done. First, it is important to know what type of thyroid cancer that family member has. If he or she has medullary thyroid cancer, then the next step is to find out if the family member has a RET gene mutation, which will indicate that the medullary cancer was inherited. If this is the case, all first-degree family members should also be tested for the RET gene. This is usually done by a simple blood test or with a swab test taken from the cheek inside of the mouth. Each family member that tests positive for the RET mutation should notify all of his or her other first-degree relatives so they can be tested and so on. Each person that might require genetic testing should speak with a genetics counselor. If a parent's test is negative, then his or her children are not at risk and no further testing or follow-up is necessary. If a family member has papillary, follicular, or hurdle cell cancer, then it is very important to have a thorough and accurate family history. This should include information regarding other family members with thyroid cancer, as well as family members with other tumors that might be associated with the other syndromes mentioned earlier. If there is no evidence of thyroid cancer or any of these diseases, then the immediate family does not need further evaluation. If a person finds that he or she has one family member with papillary or follicular cancer, but none of the other disorders, then there is some increased risk, but no clear guidelines on how to proceed. The minimum recommended treatment is that the thyroid glands should be examined by a doctor. If any abnormality is detected, a thyroid ultrasound should be done as well. Some doctors would recommend that all immediate family members have a thyroid ultrasound. In cases of three or more family members affected by non-medullary thyroid cancer, the risk of a familial disorder is quite high, so thyroid ultrasound examinations are more strongly recommended. The regularity and length of time that thyroid ultrasounds should be performed for people with family members with familial non-medullary thyroid cancer is not known. However, if a thyroid lump or nodule is detected, even if it is very small, it should be biopsied if the patient is at risk for familial non-medullary thyroid cancer.